with that. Hi, this is Paul Palmer, and I'm back again today with Natasha. Hello, Natasha. Hey, Paul, great to be with you. <laughs> and nice to have you back, Natasha. So, hey, go ahead. Paul, I, so the monkeys, you know, have you ever had a manager refer to their employees as monkeys? Well, yeah, they, it, it's actually, um, they say that the monkey could do it better. Exactly. I had a manager say the same thing. And, you know, it's kind of a little bit funny, but then the implications of that kind of settle in. And if a manager is treating their employees like monkeys, do we really think that they're going to get the best performance out of them? Well, well no, they don't. I've seen it in practice. So the, the employees work to the level that they're treated. So I find that if somebody's treated well and they're looked after and they're encouraged, then they're going to get to the point where they, they help and they support the business and, and find improvements to the processes. But it, it's, it's when they talk to them as if they're monkeys, as if they're just they don't know anything, they can't think. <laughs> yeah. And they tend to go down to the level at which they're treated and they just wait to be told to do the next thing. You know, when you say that, it reminds me of a piece of research we did. And we did this literally around the world in over 15 different countries with people from over 50. And when we'd ask people, um, what proportion of your potential do you bring to the job? Um, most people and most meaning more than 50%, closer to 75, 80% would say they're bringing 35 to 40% of their potential to the job. Yeah. And they were saying 100% of their managers are happy with that because that's the level at which they were allowed to perform. Mm. And I, that's remember, I remember an example from, from a number of years ago, a guy that I was working with, he was, he was just on the production line. He was, he was basically, he was taking the tube from there to there because there wasn't the, the, the uh, conveyor couldn't do a certain section. It was, I don't know, 25 years ago. They're more sophisticated now the way that they run the conveyors, but he had to just take it from there to there. And that was his job constantly because the machine was running at 60 a minute. So he had to keep up him and the, some, another guy at the other side. So I was talking to him at, at, at Coffee Town because I was I was on the same floor. We had the same, shared the same area to have the coffee. He had a PhD. Wow! And you wouldn't know that just watching watching the movements, would you? No, he was really interested to talk, interesting to talk to. But he'd come in because he wanted the money to support his whatever activity he was doing, uh, right. and then he got something that was more fitting. But he was there in the production line, just just doing the, the, the really basic menial task because they didn't just join the company. Oh, what a waste of potential. Mm. What a waste of human life. What a waste of, and I mean, you could see that perspective of, you know, a monkey could do this. Well, maybe a monkey could or couldn't, mm. right? But there's so much more behind that human doing that repetitive motion. Yeah. And I think we see the human doing the repetitive motion. We believe that is the human. And that is the human doing a certain thing, which is a tiny slice of their life and their potential. Mm. And he was, he was doing it eight hours a day and he wasn't allowed to do something else. Wow. And that organization is losing probably 99.9% .9 of the potential of that human being yeah. to do more, to be more to see more, to contribute more. Yes, and I find a lot of the time, the, the supervisors, the managers, they don't want more because it complicates the job for them. If the team thinks, well, they have to deal with whatever the input is. Yeah. And I, I, I another example, okay? So I like examples. <laughs> so um, somebody else I was working with <clears throat> and, um, she was creating a presentation, a presentation which was part of the training requirements. And I said, well, 
actually this needs to fix in and this needs to go here and this here and and she said oh no let's just leave it as it is because the, the manager that we're going to submit it to well she's just going to change it anyway so what's the point so she was probably putting 30 40 percent into it that she could have done because she's been a, a trainer for years 10 15 years and she'd been creating these presentations but the manager was liked her way she did a certain course in, in Six Sigma or some other um, activity, and she thought she was better at it. So rather than using the resources that was available, she insisted on doing it herself. But that was demotivating the team. And, and the managers probably saying, I have to do this all myself all the time because I don't have anyone who can do it. And they're not aware of their own approach, their own come from is dampening the performance and the potential and the potential for greater productivity and creativity. Exactly. Exactly. It's the, it's the treating them like monkeys mentality. As we were talking about in our other conversation before, if you treat them like monkeys, they like like monkeys. If you treat them like intelligent people and you want them to actually um, uh, contribute, then you have to make it clear that they can contribute. You have to give them the authority, the approval to contribute. People are really, um, a lot of the time, they, they want the, um, not necessarily the approval, they want the acceptance that what they're going to say, somebody's going to take account of it. And if nobody's going to take account of it, why should they bother? So are we teaching people to hear no evil, see no evil? Do no evil, speak no evil. Well, yeah, they they look they're not watching what's happening on the line because, because they're they just doing what, not to. they're not looking at what the opportunities are because they're doing as they're told. They're not doing the root cause analysis because they're just doing as they're told. It's a real shame because there's so many people not just in the quality team, in all of the different areas, <clears throat> the different departments, who could contribute much more, but because they're doing as they're told and, and they don't have any time available to improve the processes, the systems that they're working to, they just carry on. And maybe that's the thing we should talk about on our next video. It's about teamwork. And, and the way that the way you treat the teams impacts their behavior. Let's do that. So that's it for me for today. It's Paul Palmer and Natasha Todorovic. Thank you, Natasha. We'll be back again soon, everybody.